Okay, how about um titla you 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 how about the um imagine new writers who are exploring um new media, you know, for, for their books. Um I listened to Tundeleye on, on your show once. Tundeleye has his blog, mm. you know, yeah. and uh, he churns out fiction stories and all that. What, what do you... Yeah. Um, I, I, I do believe that the Nigerian authors are, they're still trying to find themselves. The new ones, they're still trying to find themselves. They're still trying to find a level ground and uh, figure out what exactly works for them. Um, they have great ideas. Sometimes, as I've heard earlier today while we're off air, that um, they don't have the, sometimes the business acumen to, to put these books in the best position to sell. But then what they're writing about is wholesome, it's interesting, um, it, um, it's encouraging and inspirational as well. So I think there's so many different things that are happening right now um, with the new authors. For instance, uh, I received this one from a young man. Um, this is called Cold Murder, and I was like, wow, um, <laughs> where did you come from? I don't even know you. His, na his name is Ayola Emmanuel. Um, and from what I can remember, um, he's a law student. And um, he just couldn't help himself. He just started writing. And you know, in between you know, lectures and things like that, he would just be writing and writing. Um, but then he decided to go in this genre. I've seen some of the work you've done here and um, the African writing, African-writing.com. Yeah, African-writing.com. African African yeah. African uh, we need more platforms such as that to en encourage, educate the next, next generation to follow us and do, when I say us, I feel like I'm already published. I'm oh not yeah, published yeah, yet. Of 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 <laughs> <laughs> already, I feel like I'm part of it. But the truth is, have the authors put things down that they can say they have done to encourage others behind them? Or are they so focused on just getting the book out and finally getting it published and finally people are even reading it and then they forget that, fine, okay, they've read the book now, but people coming after me, am I really going to be the only one in my generation with, with all this great information, in my, um, great works, great works of art in front of me? So after I'm, I'm gone, what, what happens next? So when will the next Chinua Achebe come? When, where will he come from? Ha, what has he put in place? Or not to say that he did not put anything in place. I'm just trying to use him as an example. What has he put in place to encourage others after him to learn and keep learning and keep reading and keep writing? You know, so I, I believe education is a major thing here. Okay, okay, good. Because uh, I, I, I wanted to pick on something close. What exactly is the problem? Um, Chuma, you've written four or five books, if I'm right, or more. <laughs> or ten, okay. Um, it's like you've reviewed all these books mm. and more on, on, on your program. This year, um, I mean, in 2013, I probably saw more books mm. in 2013 written by Nigerians than I ever saw in my lifetime because People were sending in books, I mean, to the show. Oh, I've written this new book, I wanted to review that. I've written this new book. Lots and lots of books kept coming in every day. Mm. So Nigerians are writing. Okay. Why don't we have some of the things you listed a couple of minutes ago? Um, the distribution network, the, um, the printing industry, the whatever else we need to get these books out. Is there a fundamental cultural problem with regards to our attitude to promoting these works of literature? Because Nigerians are really gifted. You go through some of these books and you just wonder. Yeah. It's, it's an awesome country in terms of gifts. Yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I think mm. uh, on the issue of um, talent, uh, mm. there's no question about it. Nigerians are exceptionally talented. Mm. It may be down to the population. We have, you mm. know, we are reputed to have so many fraudsters. Obviously, mm. we will, uh, by the same token, mm. have a larger number of carpenters, of doctors, and of mm. writers. But beyond that, uh, you did point to the problems that they are. And these problems come from the chief problem we've got in Nigeria, which is mm. corruption, mm. which breaks down into the fact that 
if you put a million naira into education ministry, yeah. maybe 20,000 will get down at the bottom where you have the schools. Mm. So these are the problems so that the reason why, for instance, when I deal with students, I might find that there's a lot of talent, but not enough craft, which means that the writing will need a lot of work in order before it gets, you know, it gets out, mm. it's before it's actually publishable. And so we have that disconnect between ability and you know what comes out at the end so mm. there's a lot of work that needs to be done mm. mostly because of the, the systemic problems but mm. we will get there i think the question is why why do people um do things anyway why do people do things why do people make things happen because they see that there is something that they will gain from it um, fine. Some people have selfless gains in mind. Some people are just mostly selfish in their in what they want to gain from it. And if some people don't see something as um, an avenue to make money, especially in this country, um, they don't go towards that direction. I'm not saying making money is bad. Making money is fantastic. Um, but the truth is, um, the money will be spent, and then after the money is gone, what what do you have left? Uh, you also have a case whereby, okay, the people that are actually at the top, um, there's a question of how they got there in the first place. Uh, the struggle that they struggled to get there, <laughs> the people they had to, you know, uh, you know, impress. I'm mm -hmm. going to use the word impress mm -hmm. here before they got there. Um, and they didn't give them that position, you know, to now start helping others. And they gave you that position so that you can help them. Um, so if one of them that you're helping is probably an author, you probably realize that we would have a lot more um, focus on maybe educating young authors. If someone up there had focus on literature or was an author or something like that up there, eventually one person will get there. It, it just happens to be um, an area that is it's a great area to me. Um, you find some secondary schools where one textbook to five kids. And I believe in others, in people helping people. Um, I started something on air for the Christmas season um, called Dear Santa. If you were going to write something to Santa, what would you write? Mm -hmm. And the letters I've got would blow your mind. Um, probably about 50 to 60 emails on people that wanted laptops for different reasons. Fine, some people see laptops as a luxury. But the truth is they wanted to empower themselves. How they wanted to empower themselves in different areas, education, their business, uh, they have a shop, I want to be able to calculate my goods, uh, you know, I want to finish my school project, or I want to learn to write. Uh, I think if I have a computer, people will respect me more, you know, <laughs> different reasons. But then there are still some people that don't even have enough textbooks in schools. So yeah, it's, it's a lot deeper, you know, it goes really, really deep into into the minds of the people and then okay then you also have to think about things like the fact that people don't even have time to read these days they're in traffic probably three to six hours a day in places like lagos how do they get but if, you, if you're talking about time to read mm. on your phone you can get your very short flash fiction at the seller price for you know thank goodness so you, for you, that you, you can you can read yeah. on the phone you have short stories collections technology read is really helping minutes. yeah so but then with technology no like excuses. that I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much it costs to download those, and how much the author eventually will gain from flash sharing the books. Um, it then comes back to profit again, you know. So people just believe that oh, eventually what I will get will not be much. Even the the artists, um, the whiz kids and Banky W's and Two Faces of of our time, how much did they actually make from album sales? Not that much. It ends up being performances that they make money from. But as writers, they don't they don't perform much. <laughs> Fine, they, they have book well, readings. We always find a way to, to call Yes. But you can consider yes. your flash fiction as a calling card. Mm. You know, almost like a download. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm, download, mm -hmm. tune download. You don't want mm. to even if you make a penny from it, when numbers get significant, you know, it becomes uh, it mm. becomes uh, interesting. Unfortunately we're out of time. But let me ask you, um, Heading into 2014, what's your projection? What do you see happening? I see more of the same. I see a, a, an efflorescence of Nigerian fiction. Uh, 2014 mm -hmm. is obviously the year of the, you know, the year of the book. Uh, we have the mm -hmm. 
Port Harcourt. There's a lot of focus internationally on Port Harcourt. Great things will happen there. And uh, I think it's going to the, the, we're going to see more of a connection between literature and life. This question people keep asking, what's, what's, what's in literature for me? We will see it live. That's mm. my prediction for 2014. Mm. Mm. Uh, wow, well, predictions. Uh, I, I really don't like making predictions. Um, but I'm, I hope and I pray towards uh, people understanding that literature is not for boring people. It's not for old people. It's not for people that have extra time on their hands. It's for people that want to learn, want to make an impact, and want to improve on themselves. And when they understand this, in a year like 2014, everybody is getting older and wiser, hopefully. Um, they will in tune, tune in to the works of Nigerian authors instead of going to a bookshop and as soon as they go to the bookshop they go to the international bestseller section they'll start going to the Nigerian bestseller section and then the bookshops will have larger sections for Nigerian books and smaller sections for international books that's just one of the steps I believe that I, is gonna have to happen in, in the next one year if we really want to make prediction. yes I stand behind it too. yes <laughs> by God's grace hopefully Thank yes. you very much for joining Thank us on the Channel's Book Club. Mm -hmm. Great having you. Thank you we very love much. Love it here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all we have for today. I hope you will join us next week for the last episode of this show in 2013. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.